Look at all those pretty feathery copper crystals in there. Isn't that neat? That's a fair amount. That's more than I was expecting to get. Well, hello scrappers. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. Um, there's some uh, mowing going on at the farm today, so there's some background noise. I hope you can hear me okay over it. Uh, and for a change, I'm not involved in doing the mowing, though I may switch out later and do some because we got a lot of acres. But anyway, this video is about what's going on in this bucket right here. And I'll show you what we got here. We've got a lot of deep green liquid in this bucket. And what is this liquid? This is the waste from my IC chip delegging process, where I dissolve the legs off of IC chips before I process them to recover the gold and silver. So there's a lot of iron in this bucket because the legs have a lot of steel in them. There's a lot of copper in this bucket because the legs have a lot of copper in them. And there's some tin in here too, I'm sure, because the legs are tin. So what I want to try doing is recovering the copper out of this solution down here. So, let's see if we can figure out a way to do it. We'll try a small scale test. If that works, we'll scale up and process most of the liquid in the bucket, okay? So I got a beaker here, one liter beaker. I'm gonna fill it about halfway full, roughly, with this nasty green liquid. That's about half a liter, okay? And I keep it covered so rainwater doesn't dilute it. All right. So let's go over to the lab and start processing this stuff and see what we can do with it. All right, so it's a little quieter over here at the lab. Um, so we've got right about 500 milliliters of this deep green liquid. It's green because it's got a lot of copper dissolved in it. It started out as muriatic acid in a five gallon bucket, a couple gallons worth. Um, I bubble air through it with an air bubbler and I submerge a plastic colander in it full of IC chips. I'll put a link to my uh, IC delegging video in the upper right if you want to see how that's done and where this liquid came from. Once it got saturated with uh, metal salts, it wasn't working all that well anymore for delegging. It took a couple of years, believe it or not. A lot of IC chips went through those buckets. I have two buckets, two five-gallon buckets I use for delegging. So now I want to try and get the copper out of this stuff. Um, Basically, all we have to do is put a more reactive metal than copper into it, into this copper-saturated acidic solution, and the copper should start coming out. It will cement out as the more reactive metal goes in. I've got a little piece of aluminum here. I'll put a piece of aluminum in and see what happens. Not much immediately. Ah, oh, there we go. Now we're getting some bubbling. Yeah, we're starting to get some bubbling. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the reaction's getting more vigorous by the moment. And I use a small piece because I'm afraid that with a larger piece, the reaction could get extremely vigorous. So we'll just let this sit in there and see what happens over the next few minutes. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes, and uh, you can see how much bubbling has gone on here. The liquid has actually warmed up some from the reaction of the aluminum in there. And unless I miss my guess, those bubbles are hydrogen gas. We can test that with a torch here. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, hydrogen gas. Okay, so I'm glad I used a small piece of aluminum. Because we could have had a much more vigorous reaction with a boil over here. In fact, I'll take a big piece of aluminum and stick it in there and we'll see what happens. Oh yeah, it's taken off. Oh yeah, look at it go. Look at it go. Oh yeah, this will boil over real quick if I leave this in here. Oh, look at that. Yeah, wow. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, okay. 
So I don't think aluminum is the way to go with this because the reaction is just going to get too vigorous, too hot. There's too much of a chance of boil over. So let's try a less reactive metal than aluminum that hopefully will work as well, even if it's slower. <clears throat> yeah, the aluminum reaction is starting to die down. That little ring I put in there must be about chewed up. So I'm sure a little bit of uh, copper has been removed from solution and fallen to the bottom of the beaker. But let's see if we can do better without chancing a boil over. So we're going to use a less reactive metal. I've got a couple of pieces of steel conduit here. Steel is basically iron. And iron is much more reactive than copper, but not nearly as reactive as aluminum. So I think if I put a couple of pieces of conduit in here, I'm thinking the reaction's going to continue, but at a much slower, more reasonable pace. It may be a little fast up front. I see a little bit of bubbling around them because these pieces of conduit are galvanized, which means they're coated with zinc, which is a fairly reactive metal too. But once the zinc gets chewed off, you can already start to see a little copper forming on there. Yeah, once the zinc gets chewed off, it should slow down to something more sedate, more reasonable. And uh, we should get a lot of copper drop into the bottom of the beaker as it grows off the sides, uh, as copper crystals grow off the sides of the steel conduit there and then fall to the bottom. So we'll just let this sit and uh, see what goes on. Like I said, I see some bubbling, but it's nothing like the aluminum. Oh, yeah. You see the coating of copper on there already? Look at that. Look at that coating of copper on there. I hope that's showing up. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to set this aside and just let it sit. We'll check on it from time to time and see how it's going. But this will probably take a day or two, I think, for the reaction to complete um, with iron rather than with aluminum, which was just going way too fast. All right, it's been about 20 minutes. I put this stuff in the fume hood just to get it off my workbench because I was doing other stuff. I didn't want it to be in the way. The, 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 temp the heat is not on on the hot plate. It's just in here to get it out of the way. But I'll tell you what, the liquid has gotten quite warm sitting here over the last 20 minutes. And, uh, yeah, the copper. Ooh, that is hot. Wow, that piece of metal is very hot. Okay, so we've still got a reaction going on. It's just not as crazy as it was with the aluminum. There's a lot of copper depositing on these things. So we're just going to let that sit there and continue to go. Maybe we'll check on it again later today. But I think what I'm going to do is just leave it until it looks like the process is done. And we'll see how much copper accumulates on the bottom of this beaker. So should be quite interesting. Because I've got probably four gallons of liquid out there. And this is half a liter. So we'll see how much copper we get out of this half a liter. And see if it's worth trying to recover the rest of the copper out of that four gallons of liquid. Should be interesting. Okay, so we're just going to let this sit and check on it again later. All right, it's been about two, two and a half hours. And um, I'll tell you what, the reaction is still going on. I see bubbles coming up. The liquid is still warm, although not as hot as it was early on. And look, I don't know if you can see that. We got copper crystals on the bottom of the beaker. So, yeah, it's working. It's working. So that's great. So I'm just going to let this sit here probably for a day or two and just let the uh, let the process finish. Okay, I think it'll in a couple of days it should be done. The weather's going to be really crummy for the next couple of days anyway, so I'll just leave it sit out here in the fume hood and do its thing, and we'll check on it again in a couple of days when conditions out here improve and we'll see just how much copper we have managed to cement out of that half liter of my waste liquid all righty so it's been a little longer than i said it was going to be i said i was going to leave this here for like two days so it's been i don't know four and a half days sitting there because remember i said the weather was going to be crappy for the next couple of days so i was just going to leave it well little did i know that crappy weather turned into a direct hit from hurricane milton so i've spent nothing but the last couple of days just cleaning up the property around here waiting for the flood waters to subside and uh 
we have no power. So if things are a little darker than usual, it's because there's no power out here in my lab. But I'm taking a break from cleaning up. Those floodwaters have receded out here in the lab. I can actually get out here without having to wade. So let's see what's happened here. Um, I see quite a layer of copper crystals in there. I don't know how well that's showing up on the camera without the lab lights, but yeah. There's a lot of copper in there. At least it looks like it. Let me uh, pull these uh, pieces of steel conduit out and rinse them off. Oh, look at that. Eaten right through. So that's how much steel had to go into solution to uh, cement out the copper. This was not eaten through, but I can tell it's a whole lot thinner. Thickness on that side. Thickness on that side. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So let me pour off this sort of greenish liquid and we'll have a look at what's going on in the bottom of this beaker. Yeah, our power may be out for a while. We've been running on generators for the last three and a half days. Went out looking for gas for the generator today. I only found two open gas stations because most of the gas stations don't have power and they haven't had gas deliveries since before the hurricane. There are only two open gas stations, and both of them had lines blocks long to get in. So it's like, well, I think we got enough gas for the other day or two. Plus, we've got propane. Our generator goes either way. So I guess we're good for now. All right. So here's some rather dirty copper in the bottom of this. I think it's got a lot of rust in it, too. I'm going to give it a few rinses with uh, distilled water. I want to get the acid off of it. Because this was a very acidic solution. Still going to be very acidic. And uh, see if I can get, get it cleaned up and make it shiny. Yeah, this copper will probably start corroding pretty quickly. I don't get all this acidic stuff off of it. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some tin in here too. Oh, that's the remains of the aluminum ring I put in. Um, I think it survived because it's heavily anodized on the outside, and the anodized part did not react. Paper thin. Now, I'm not expecting to get a huge amount of copper out of this waste material. I can go running to the uh, scrap yard and make a lot of money. Um, but whether it's really worth it or not, I do need to treat this waste and get the toxic heavy metals out of it, including the copper, tin, anything else that's in it. With that gone, it makes this liquid easier to treat. I'll try to uh, remember to put a link to my uh, waste liquid treatment system in the upper right. You can check that out if you like. But once this liquid has all the toxic heavy metals out of it, this sort of yellow-green color is indicative of uh, iron. Mostly what's left in it's iron. Um, but yeah, once the uh, heavier metals are out of it, I can uh, neutralize the pH, precipitate the solids, and then the liquid is good to go down the municipal sewer system. Pretty harmless. Hey, this is cool. I'll give you a close-up look at what I've seen in the beaker here. Look at all those pretty feathery copper crystals in there. Isn't that neat? That's a fair amount. That's more than I was expecting to get. That's really cool. All right, I'm going to give this stuff a few more rinses with distilled water. And then... Uh, We'll dry it out and weigh it. All right, so this is about the fourth rinse water I've got in here. Let's give it a test with some litmus paper and see if it's still acidic. Nah, that's pretty close to neutral. Okay, good. I've got all the acid off of it. Maybe the stuff won't tarnish immediately. We'll see, because those crystals are really pretty. 
All right, so let me dump off this water. Maybe I'll give it one more rinse just to be certain. And then we'll dry it out. All right, now I need to dry this stuff out so I can get an accurate weight on it. But I would normally just put the beaker on my hot plate and uh, dry it out that way. But if with no power, that's not an option. So I think it's a nice sunny day, as it generally is after a hurricane, when you don't have power and air conditioning. Um, I think I'm going to just put it in this uh, gold pan here and set it out in the sun and let Mother Nature dry it out. And while that's happening, I'll go back to working on cleaning stuff up and fixing stuff. I've got to repair the enclosure around back where my kilns are. The hurricane pretty much destroyed that. I don't know if I can repair it. At least I want to get a roof over the kilns before it rains again. They've actually had a chance to dry out a bit over the last couple of days. So, All right, so let me get this out in the sun get it drying out and once it's good and dry we'll weigh it see what we got all right so this stuff's been in the sun for a few hours it's good and dry um let's weigh it up and see what we've got here let's see okay we're on the gram scale wow 69 grams. Holy cow. Or 2.43 ounces. That is not too shabby considering it came out of, you know, only half a liter of the liquid in that bucket. There's more copper in there than I thought. That's some good, clean, shiny looking copper, too. I'll bet there's some tin in it. I wouldn't be surprised. It might be more of a uh, a bronze than a copper, but it sure looks like copper. I think tin's probably a minor constituent compared to the copper. Okay, that's cool. Well, I think that was a pretty good result from half a liter of this greenish liquid, which I have four-ish gallons of. Um, there's There's a layer of sludge on the bottom, so I'm not sure exactly how much liquid there is here. But, uh, wow, I think I can get a lot of copper out of this liquid. And I need to treat it anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Figure out a way to process the rest of the liquid in this bucket. So I'll put my thinking cap on, gather up some scrap steel, and uh, we'll figure out a way to do this in the next video. So subscribe to see that video and all the other videos i got coming out on lots of different subjects. Gold recovery, silver recovery. Platinum Group Metals Recovery. Yes, I didn't learn my lesson with uh, Jove and stuff. I'm going to go after some more palladium, but that's in the future. So subscribe to see those videos. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye.